What is archival fashion, first of all? <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're the expert, what, the what, what does it mean? No, no, no. What does it actually mean when people say... Yo, what up, hey, how you doing, guys? My name is Serge, and today we are back with another video, and as you can tell, we are in a different environment to the usual. We are actually in the physical space of Silver League. Now, to some of you guys that may be aware, Silver League is Fernando's store that specializes in archive, I want to take the piss out of him for it, in archive, Japanese archive fashion. And I'm doing this for the word archive just because I feel like it's a term that gets thrown around super easily. I, for one, I don't really know if I fully grasp everything that's about it and what it really means. To my understanding, it just means vintage pieces that are somewhat sought after and that has a higher resale value at the moment. There's a lot of this, so yeah, a higher resale value. And so he's got a dope selection of various pieces and I thought, you know what, let me take this opportunity to kind of have fun at it. It is in a way, or these aren't necessarily pieces that I would necessarily buy or add into my wardrobe. And so I kind of like that challenging element. So today we have three outfits that I put together and I see them as the three different levels or the three tiers of the archive fashion world. So you've got the beginner, the intermediate, and then you have the expert for slash the boss level that you have to be in order to become an archive expert, in order to become an archivist, as Fernando Rangel refers himself to. With that being said, let's just jump straight into it with outfit number one. Now, outfit number one is the beginner. So the beginner is someone that only has a couple of pieces and he wishes to dabble in the world of archive fashion. So for the bottoms, we have the helmet lang, painter jeans. I believe these are from 1998, which makes these 20 years old. No, 21 years old, that's crazy. These jeans to me, oh my, they fit absolutely perfect. These are a size 30, I love the fit. These are somewhat of a slim, straight fit to them. They're relatively long-ish, I think it's about a 32 inches inseam, but I give them a nice little turn up because I like the way that they sit with my boots. Speaking of which, I am wearing them with boots, so you've got the SLP black wires with the harness. Now, if I wanted to go for a different vibe for this outfit, I could have left them long and worn them with some other combat boots, but I don't know, I kind of like this whole pirate-esque forward slash going out or you're going somewhere. Then the main event, at least in my opinion, yeah, the jeans are fire and a lot of people will will gravitate towards this outfit for the jeans. But for me, the shirt from Autumn Winter 16, I wore this in my previous video and a lot of you guys have picked it out. By the way, fuck me, you lot are very opinionated with regards to the Louis Vuitton pieces, which I know was going to divide a lot of people. Some people either love it, some people either hate it but great discussion and I'm thankful for everyone that's voiced their opinion. Coming back on topic, we have the shirt from Prada, Autumn Winter 16, and this was the collaboration that Prada did with the artist Christoph Schimmer. And this particular piece was the Forbidden Love or something, something love. It features Elvis Presley and it's supposed to be Cleopatra, a drawing of them two kissing, which historically would have been obviously very much inaccurate. That's why it's called the Forbidden Love. What's it called? Forbidden love? Unforgetful love? Or some, some something along those lines. This shirt, man, so, so buff. There was two versions of this, at least to my understanding. One short sleeve, which was seen by the many, and this long sleeve, which is a bit more harder to come by. I wore it with all the buttons pretty much undone, just had two or three at the bottom. And I love the detachable pieces that kind of float about. So you've got a detachable collar, you've got detachable cuffs, sleeve cuffs, and the placket in itself comes out. Absolutely love this fit. To me, this is a very simple, super easy, there isn't much going on, it's a very LA-esque fit, so perfect for, for where I am right now. Very easy, as I said, this is the beginner level into the archival world, and um, one that everybody can pull off, so easy, let's put that to the side, let's move on to outfit number two, now this is intermediate. Intermediate is someone who, in my opinion, considers himself as as, as a uh, someone that has a good collection of archival pieces, right? So you have this guy has pretty much a head-to-toe outfit that is archive, but he's still injecting a bit of newer fashion. In this particular instance, we have the boots. So let me just bring it back up. The central piece of this outfit were the trousers. These are from Yoji Yamamoto, the Wise line, which to my understanding is the vintage line. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna ask Fernando later, so hopefully he might be able to correct me on that. But those trousers, so those are the white bondage trousers which has a strap system which, as I'm showing you in the outfit, controls 
the length of the trousers controls the waist it's a single strap that actually goes around the whole body of the trousers white amazing fabric size three so they are kind of big ish but as I said, that strap, you can tighten it, you can play around with it. And so I did that. Paired up with the Rick Owens boot. I think they look incredible, kind of gives it that combat-esque vibe spot on. Like to me, bellissimo. Up top, we kept it simple with a black t-shirt from Uniqlo. Can he go along with it? Five quid. Thank me later, best t-shirt you'll ever own. And we have this amazing Issey Miyake Sport or Issey Sport bomber jacket, the red wool and the black leather sleeves. Supposedly, this is what I've been told, the version with the black leather sleeves is a bit more harder to come by as opposed to all wool bomber jacket that they have released. And in the back you have the IS, which has become somewhat of an iconic, somewhat meme-esque piece. And a lot of people have got their eyes on it to my understanding. It's hyped, it's popping, whenever it pops up on Grailed, it always sells out. And yeah man, super super nice piece. This was in a size medium, fits kind of oversized. It's a really nice layering piece. Now to my surprise, LA isn't actually as hot or as warm as I thought it would be. And right now the weather is a bit temperamental, so this fit, this, but like I said, this piece is actually perfect for the weather. And yeah, once again, it's a somewhat simple outfit. Like there isn't crazy layering. It's just a t-shirt, a bomber jacket, some nice trousers and some boots. But you know, this guy, this guy know what he's doing when it comes to this archival game, you know? Yo, I'm sweating. Yo, it is mad hot. Like, Fernando's got two lights and they're just beaming at my face. I'm sweating everywhere. Shouldn't have worn the beanie, but my hair is an absolute mess. And actually, in fact, some of these outfits have my hair just floating about. And then last but certainly not the least, we've come to the final guy, the big boss, the archive, like this is the, the boss that comes at the end of the, of the archive game. This guy, head to toe archive, it's like that expression, just throw shit on the wall and, and hope it sticks. And he's just literally throwing on some archival pieces on and hopes it sticks. And we decided to keep it all black, everything, or very, very dark. So we've got this number nine shirt with a skull motif, black on black, rayon, Super super buff fits amazing actually and definitely a shirt that I could see myself wearing and myself purchasing and including into my wardrobe So this shirt is actually a winner for moi then bottom we have the Jean-Paul Gaultier leather black leather trousers They fit beautifully. They've got this really nice straight Ever so slight taper to them. I think they're great and a tidbit of information dropped by Fernando and I kind of agree with him I feel like JPG Jean-Paul Gaultier is one of those brands that within the archival world I feel like I'm gonna get shot whenever I say this just by some people like purists that completely disagree with this But I feel like it is somewhat on the come up like number nine have their bars and have their movement Helmet Lang is obviously very prominent Raph Simmons very prominent undercover and I feel like a brand like JPG is not as prominent, though he's had a very successful career and some amazing pieces, it's definitely a brand that is now being on the come up, I think. Back to the point, those trousers, mwah. Then we have the boots. Boy, I fucking love these boots. These are from Junior Watanabe, and they've got these crystals and studded detailing. It's got a tiny Cuban heel, it's got a harness. It's definitely a boot that if it was a tiny bit more refined and a bit more polished and a bit more pointier, sleek, then this is something that the likes of SLP, Calvin Klein will be doing. But I love this sort of robust take on a cowboy boot, in essence. And I think they look great. In fact, they're a boot that I'm hopefully going to be looking to purchase. So I'm going to have to pull, uh, pull some strength with the man, Fernando, and, and hopefully he can bless me with the friends and family discount. And then to wrap things up, and one of my favorite pieces out of this whole video, is this amazing, amazing coat from Undercover. It is from Autumn Winter 2004, and the main takeaway from this guy, I guess, it is the button detailing that is inspired by the paper dolls. Now this is a very subtle way to kind of matchy match. You've got the red buttons that kind of match with the red crystals that are apparent on the boots. You've got some of the silver detailing that kind of pulls from the boots once again. So super nice outfit. Oh, before I even close off this outfit, one of my favorite elements actually from this coat is the back vent. The double vent with the belt looks awesome. This is definitely a fit that I can see myself rocking. I know it's very heavy. Me personally, I probably wouldn't wear head to toe archive fashion, if you wish to call it that, but uh, this is one way that I would picture a boss level archi archivist. Archivist? I think that's what, I think that's, that's the term. Archivist 
uh, can be seen rocking. I think it's a super dope fit, definitely something that is outside of my comfort zone, but I'm glad that I got a chance to try. So yeah, that concludes the three outfits. We've got the beginner, the intermediate, the expert for slash the boss level. I would see myself being the beginner guy. I would uh, incorporate one or two at most archival pieces within my collection. I think there's some really like looking around and seeing some of the stuff in here. It's so, so sick. Uh, for example, give me two seconds. If you look at this guy right here, obviously this piece, wait, focus, 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 please. Three, there we go. This piece, whew, the lighting is absolutely gonna blow it out. But this piece right here from Helmet Lang, I can't for the life of me tell you what season it's from, but it's just a buff piece now. Obviously, there's a lot of hype behind it. It's made beautifully, the color's incredible. It's a size 44, which is equivalent to like an extra small, but it's definitely a piece that I would have loved to have got involved. And I would love to, to, to cop in my size, if possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO, founder, fashion archive expert, forward slash archivist, founder and creator of Silver League, Fernando Rangel. Ladies and gentlemen, come here, mate. Oh, shit, you should zoom in. <laughs> there you go. You can, you can actually let's step back. So then you can you can find. All right, I should have stood on a box. There you go. I'm gonna stand on that side. <laughs> Why? Is this your good side? This guy. This guy. I am on my tiptoes. So of the one outfit in particular towards the end, it's out of focus. Completely. It's, it's just a bit, but it's right. It's manageable. It's this guy's fault. But talk to me about some of the pieces that I showcased today. Like anything special about them? What's your take on what is archival fashion? First of all, <laughs> Come on, you're, you're, you're the expert. What, the what, what does it mean? Big no, no, no. What does it actually mean when people say? Well, obviously, it gets tossed around pretty lightly nowadays. Okay. Same thing with. I would say high beast uh -huh. culture. There are archival pieces that obviously were extremely influential and a lot of the older designers are probably <laughs> I feel like such a headass bro. I feel like such a headass. Yeah, go on, anyways, go on, go on, like, go on, go on. A lot of the designers from back then pioneered a ton of different styles. Some of pioneered. them pioneered. Go on. Some of them. <laughs> bro, I don't wanna do this. The guy's a bit shy. We'll, we'll leave it as that. Um <laughs> What did I actually want to speak about? So, key pieces, let me just say... That you wore? Or? Yeah, that I wore. This was one of the key pieces from Alfie Numero Uno. Sanchez so is buying these. 100%. Helmet Lang, painted jeans. I've already covered, well, I said they're from 98. Mm -hmm. Why are they so special? Why is such a, why is it such a big thing with Helmet Lang and the painted jeans? Is he the first to do it, or what's the vibe there? I mean, to my knowledge, he's the first to do it. Okay. You never know. It's obviously inspired by actual painter jeans. Just in general, I would say all of Helmet's jeans just end up feeling like super perfect. Yeah. It's pretty much like, it's based off an older Levi's model. I'm forgetting it. It's like 501XX or something like that. Okay, cool, sick. It's like cleaned up the fit, pretty tailored, slimmer in the thigh. Pretty regular cut at the bottom. Yeah, Obviously, he usually styled them with like boots and low, uh, not loafers. I love really? the way What? Laces, whatever the fuck they're called. Or just like Oxfords. Yeah. Right, like normal shoes, derbies, basically. Mm -hmm. Like just like great essential pieces, super well made. And obviously, like hold pretty well. Yeah, fire, like, fire. 20. And then what do? Because I feel like these float about a lot. What would you say is like a good standard price to pay for them? So you're not getting ripped off. Obviously, it's dependent on the size. The condition, some of them are in better condition than others, but I would say like they generally float around a good deal would be obviously like around 200 bucks. Okay, cool. But I would say more accurate estimate as far as like goes in the middle. Yeah. Probably like 300 ish. 300? All right, cool. So, so Sam's gonna be paying like 350 today. You heard that here, 300 pounds, uh, 300 bucks. Right? Pounds, 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 pounds. pounds. <laughs> All right, the next sort of it item from. Um, <sighs> I didn't even wear this. Wrong one, I was like, mate, what's going on? The Wait, IS, this is the, the meme bomber jacket, as Fernando likes to refer to it as. All right, talk to me. What's so special about this piece? The logo, I okay. Well, honestly, it actually these is, are, isn't it? It is pretty much just based off of the logo. Uh, Shisatu Sumori is the one that designed it. For your information, Thank please you. read K labels and hanging tags carefully for washing and handling. Oh. If you really just like dumb it down, I can see why people would be like, oh, I don't know why that runs, what's it, like two grand? Two grand? Maybe eight. Fuck, wait. I'm sure people get steals around 1400. Yeah. But I would say like people do tax on them at around like 1800. 
and it really just depends on the variation. This one's the leather sleeve version. You said is, it was quite rare. It's right. a lot harder to find. It's cool. usually just like a wool sleeve. Okay. But to be honest, I find that the leather sleeve just like weighs it down too much. Uh -huh. It makes it a little too bubbly. Yeah. I like so I that. have noticed that the wool ones fit a little bit better. I like that. I like the bubbly nature of it and super, super sick piece. Like wide in the body, mm -hmm. shorter in the body as well. I was flexing two grand on that fit. <laughs> Best believe. And then last, but certainly not the least. A little wool plaid trench. <laughs> so is, did you say what it was inspired by? Uh, paper dolls because of the different kind of buttons. It's like stuffed dolls. Paper doll was paper doll, but they're like, they do look like that. Gotcha, it's gotcha, really gotcha. easy to mix them up. But okay. pretty much like all the mismatched buttons, the little gen bust down pin right here. <laughs> the, I love oh yeah, this the double vent. And the, the double belt. vent and the belt, I think to me is what, like sure the different colored buttons are cool, Mm -hmm. But to me, when I see that, and the I way think that like just like flaps. even from afar, just like a pretty nice wall. Yeah, pattern. that too, nice yeah. pattern. It gives me pirate vibes. That was the reason why I was like, yo, this piece, mm -hmm. case, this piece is fire, and there's definitely one that I'm looking to uh, to flex I'll, in. I would say like the more sought after one. I believe is just made in women's. If I'm oh, wrong, this is a women's piece. No, this is a men's. So the men's is undercover ism. Okay. And women's is just undercover, and that's on the older ones. Tip. Knowledge, Fernando Rangel. You know he's a shit, boys. You know he's a shit. Where can they find you? Where can people cop these pieces? To the camera, mate. This I'm gonna leave you to. Oh, go on, well, go on, go on. Pretty much post every single day on at Silver League. It's the underscore e at the end, and all these products will eventually make it to the website. I might be holding on to some of the more gem type pieces. All the other stuff will eventually hit silver-league.com. Sick. Swipe up. <laughs> To get iced up. Get the fuck out. <laughs> and that is going to conclude this video. Thank you very much to the boy over for allowing me to play with these pieces. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up because it helps me out tremendously. Please, for the love of God, can you focus up in this bitch? There we go. Okay, we're good. So, where was I? I was in my outro. Thank you to Fernando for having me. Thank you to Fernando for allowing me to play with his clothes. Pause, that sounded. <laughs> no, play with his clothes. No. Dress up. Whatever. And like he said, if you wish to check out any of the pieces, links will be in the description box down below. I am most definitely looking to be copying a few pieces. And your boy got that friends and family discount. You know! Boom! If you wish to follow me on my social media, it's all right here. S-A-N-G-I-E-V. That is for my Twitter, my Instagram, and everything else. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Peace.